Hi, I'm John from Rhino Ag. Seasonal slip clutch maintenance is an important part of keeping your flex wing operating at peak performance. Today, we're gonna walk through the steps in adjusting the slip clutch, maintaining the slip clutch, and just checking to see when it has a problem and how to adjust it. So let's get started. Rhino Ag Flex Wings have a slip clutch incorporated in each PTO driveline. The clutch is designed to slip, absorb the shock load from unexpected obstructions and protect the driveline. After the first hour of use, the slip clutch should be checked for overheating and slippage. We'll discuss that later on in the process. After this initial check, the slip clutch should be checked daily or during regular clutch maintenance. The slip clutch friction plates are an eighth inch thick when new and should be replaced at a 30 second. If the mower's been sitting for an extended period of time or in wet weather, perform the seasonal clutch maintenance as outlined in the owner's manual. It's important for the clutch lining plates to slip when an obstacle or load heavier than the clutch setting is encountered. Before operating the mower, use the following procedure to make sure the clutch will slip and give the overload protection required. So for today's demonstration, we're gonna use a Rhino Ag 4155 and perform the seasonal clutch maintenance. We're gonna demonstrate by adjusting the intermediate slip clutch and it's located underneath this shield. This 4155 utilizes a Walter Scheid four disc clutch and it has a Belleville style spring to create the tension. We're gonna adjust this clutch as outlined in the seasonal maintenance section of the operator's manual. We're gonna mark each plate with a paint pen we're gonna loosen up each of these nuts and we're gonna jump in the tractor, turn it on, slip the clutches, make sure our line doesn't intersect and come back and reset the uh, bolts as per the specification from the factory. So well, let's get started. I'm gonna use a white paint pen to mark each of these plates. And we'll take a three quarter inch ratchet wrench and a three quarter inch standard wrench and we'll loosen up each nut. We're going to loosen these up until there's no tension on the Belleville spring, but the nut is still retained on the end of the bolt. With each of the nuts backed off, you can see that this uh, Belleville spring is very loose on the machine. Now we'll jump into the tractor, make sure everything's clear around the area, engage the PTO for a short burst, disengage, and then re-engage so we make sure that the clutch plates slip inside this slip clutch. Once we had the slip clutch loose, we engaged the PTO twice on the tractor and shut it back off. And as you can see, this clutch is still loose. And also the paint lines that we made earlier do not line up any longer. So that means that the internal portions of this clutch have slipped. So once we've determined that, we'll go ahead and set this slip clutch for operation. To do that, we're gonna adjust each bolt until there's zero gap underneath the Belleville washer to the clutch drive plate. Now that we've got each of these nuts tightened down to where the Belleville washer is flat against the drive plate, we'll do the adjustment setting. The adjustment setting for a four disc Walter Scheid style clutch is three turns loose we'll want to mark each nut so we can count the turns. We'll mark it with this white paint pen. You can see that this clutch has been previously adjusted with the uh, black Sharpie. And then we'll count the turns as we loosen it up. And like I said, this four disc clutch is three turns loose. So I'll take and hold this back bolt with a one three quarter inch. And I'll watch the paint pin, the paint mark, and adjust the nut. There's one turn. There's two. And there's three. We'll do that adjustment for each of these retaining bolts. I made sure to adjust each of these retaining bolts and nuts equally the three turns out. That made our air gap show up between the Belleville spring and the drive plate. We want to take a look and make sure that each of the uh, bolts are adjusted correctly and we'll check this gap all the way around and it should be equal all the way around and this one looks pretty good. 
Once that gap looks equal and our clutch is adjusted with the three turns out, we're ready to go to the field. Once we get to the field, there may be some slight adjustments to be made with this. We may have to tighten it a little bit if we experience some slippage. Otherwise, for the most part, we're ready to go mow until our next maintenance cycle. Now that we've got this intermediate slip clutch adjusted on this 4155 flex wing, we're gonna repeat that procedure for the wing drive lines as well. Each of those have a slip clutch on them and the procedure is exactly the same. If you have any more questions, please refer to rhinoag.com or talk to your local Rhino dealer.